Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. My name is Rev. Michael Schoonover and I'm the minister here at Unity Way Church in beautiful Vista, California. And I invite you to our YouTube service and our YouTube channel. I know that whenever you do watch this service, it will be a blessing unto you. And I already know and affirm that you are already a blessing unto us. Our opening affirmation is from Wings of Prayer, and this is from Daily Word. This is January the 1st, 1930. God's holy temple is now being erected in the heavens of your mind. Just invite you to hold on to that idea. We create, we erect the divine ideas, the structures of our thinking, of our thoughts and our images, and that truly is what shapes our consciousness, which again shapes our experiences. As metaphysical students, we know that life is about consciousness, consciousness, consciousness. And again, as we monitor and we put in the right ideas with the right feelings and the right images, our life changes, our life does shift. As we go into this new Sunday of the new year, this is our White Stone Sunday, we'll be discussing that. Let us go in with a clear consciousness. Let's leave the past in 2023 and let's boldly step into a new heaven and a new earth within each and every one of us. And if you believe that high truth, calling and understanding, I would invite you to please use the affirmation we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now here is Amanda with our daily word. The daily word for today is wholeness. The affirmation is, wholeness is my nature and the truth of my life. I see myself whole, complete, and as a living expression of God. My thoughts fill my consciousness with the divine idea of wholeness. My words affirm this wholeness. Through my actions, I bless the life energy in my body with the right balance of exercise, rest, and nutrition. I live from my wholeness even if I experience illness. I may receive treatment, but I do not consider myself weak or diseased. I move through every health challenge with faith and grace, trusting the experience has come to pass. I remember wherever I am, Whatever may be happening, divine life is always seeking to express through me to restore my awareness of wholeness, which is and will always be my true spiritual state of being. And from Luke 11:34, your eye is the lamp of your body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if it is not healthy, your body is full of darkness. And the affirmation again, wholeness is my nature and the truth of my life, and so it is. Thank you, Amanda. Wholeness, that's a divine idea we can hold on to, especially this Sunday as we go into our white stone ceremony. Wholeness is completeness. And when we have awakened to the Christ consciousness within us, we know wholeness. It is our divine Christ birthright. I'd like to sync up with Silent Unity now. Silent Unity, a divine idea of, of actually wholeness. A divine idea right here and right now back at Unity Village in the Silent Unity Chapel. There is a soul holding that high watch knowing and believing in absolute truth, knowing and believing in answered prayer, knowing and believing in wholeness. And that's what we teach. I'd like to bless those prayer claims. I'd like to bless that prayer worker. And we know this is a divine idea of wholeness. So regardless of what they're praying for, however their prayers are answered, we affirm divine wholeness. I'd like to take some of that healing energy, prospering energy, the illumination of that light that is in that sacred chapel back at Unity Village in Missouri. And by the power of truth, I'd like to bring that wholeness into this sanctuary. And as it floods through this sanctuary and floods over our property and goes to wherever you may be, whenever you listen or watch this YouTube, may you know that you are wholeness, that you've always been wholeness. It is your divine Christ birthright. And again, if you believe that high truth understanding 
absolute truth, I invite you to use the mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. I pulled a very interesting comic for, for us this morning, and I think you'll like it. And it's a man, and it appears to be in the kitchen, and he's on his cell phone. And the caption is, don't, don't slice the pizza. My diet says I'm only allowed to eat one piece. Oh, you know that is so funny. Come on. He's on one of those diets. He's only allowed one piece, so he's not going to cut the pizza up. Oh, come on, people. You know that is funny. We need to bring laughter and joy into our, our world, especially in 2024. Happy New Year. Uh, for my minister's joke page, I have some, some wisdom, uh, some jokes from Red Skelton. And I've, I know you guys, some of you have heard of Red Skelton. If you haven't, I'd invite you to check him out. Actually, Red Skelton is one of the real comics that really trained Lucille Ball before she did I Love Lucy. Uh, when they worked at the studio together. So Red Skelton is a very talented, talented comedian. And so some wisdom from uh, Red Skelton, and he says, all men, including himself, make lots of mistakes. But by being married, uh, men find out about their mistakes much sooner. Oh, come on, guys. You know he's, he had a he loving wife. He's just having a little bit of fun. Come on, come on. Chuckle, 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 chuckle. And I have a little joke I'd like to share with you. And it, of course, is about politics. So you know it's going to be good. What does Red Skelton say about politics? And Red Skelton says this. This is how he defines Congress back in Washington, D.C. Congress, they are bingo with billions of our dollars. <laughs> oh, come on, people, 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 people. If you're going to eat bit of honey, just know that you're probably going to be chewing on that bit of honey candy longer than my services. And don't spit out. Don't be spitting out on the seats because I got to clean up after you guys. Humor is good for the soul. Humor and laughter truly are the signs of not only the presence of God, but absolute joy. And we want to enter 2024 in absolute joy. And my talk title is this morning, White Stone, Ask, Believe, and Receive. This morning, I spiritually invite you to ask, believe, and receive, which means who are you? What are you? How are you going to show up in your life? How do you want to show up in your own consciousness in 2024? A new day, a new beginning. It is a dawning within us. It's a birthing process. It's also the inception of who we are. Better understanding our wholeness and our divinity. It's the genesis point within our consciousness. It's how we unfold, how we develop. We debut, we have an emergence. We rise up out of who we are. And even, I'm not saying where we are now is bad or in mixtures, but we can always come up to a higher frequency. We can come up to a white stone consciousness. We'll be discussing that. I'd like to share with you where we get this concept of the white stone. It goes all the way back into antiquity, especially in the Middle East. And this is from uh, the book, the New Testament, the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 17. Modern scholarship says it was written by a man named John, but it is, it is not written by the apostle who wrote the gospel of John. And they put it through a computer program and none of the phraseology mixes or matches. And that, I'm not saying that to discredit the book. I'm just saying what we know today. So let's listen to this, uh, this scripture I'm going to share with you where we really again get this birthing, this genesis of a white stone. To the one who is victorious, which is us, I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. This morning, I invite us to take into prayer, take into our uh, time together, a white stone, a new beginning, the victorious Christ self within us, which means how do we want to show up on our life? We'll be discussing that in the process. Uh, one of the processes you can use your own, you can use in your own journey, in your own life. I'd like to share with you some uh, history of really uh, some etymology too about this white stone and where it comes from. In ancient Greece, jury members were given and they casted a white stone to signify an acquittal or a black stone proclaiming the defendant guilty. So the white stone really goes really, really back into antiquity, as you can see. 
Again, a white stone was often used as an amulet or a charm. It's something you can hold on to. It's a reference point in your own consciousness. And again, you get to imbue that stone uh, with the ideas, the feelings, and the images that you want to experience in your life. Also, a white stone may refer to the high priest's breastplate, which contained 12 stones, and each of those stones represent, represented the 12 tribes of Israel, which were engraved, again, on the high priest's uh, plate. The high priest bore these, these names of all the 12 tribes in God's presence whenever he went into the Holy of Holies. The white stone... It could be a reference to our standing in God's invisible presence. There's not one complete definition. We go back in antiquity, and I'm encouraging you as I'm sharing you some of the insight uh, of the white stone, I encourage us, what can a white stone mean for us in our own consciousness? A white stone may also uh, be a translucent stone because one of the definitions that is used for the word white stone can also be used as like a referencing a diamond, something very translucent, especially when it's put into the sunlight. Again, the word is translated white, which means brilliantly bright with many hues. This interpretation holds that the stone is written with the Christ name of us. Uh, not necessarily just the believer, but the Christ within us, the divinity within us, the image and likeness within us. Uh, Revelation means or mentions also the Christ name is symbolically written on our foreheads, our heart, our soul, but also our foreheads where our third eye is, the single eye of the Christ. So this white stone can have different interpretations. And I invite you to take the one that resonates with you this morning and work with it. Incorporate it into your prayer practice. Also, a white, uh, an ancient understanding of the white stone is that it was awarded to the Romans. The Romans gave it out, and it was given uh, to individuals, the white stone, to the winners of their athletic games. It also, a white stone in the Roman times, in the Roman Empire, served as a ticket to all the festive banquets in Rome. And according to a meta view, which this is the one I hold to, Jesus promises us as overcomers that we have entrance into an eternal heavenly uh, place, which is in our own consciousness, where we are victorious and we can live in celebration. Another understanding metaphysically is it's a new name, the new name within us, and it refers to the Holy Spirit's indwelling presence within us, where it's doing its energetic work within us, transforming us and believers into new resurrected beings, Christ beings. Again, uh, where there is a sparkling new me, that's really what a white stone can mean to us. It, it means that we have a new attitude. I am who I am. I'm not stuck in my old self. And that is really what a white stone can mean for each and every one of us. And now this is from the Hebrew scriptures. This is the great prophet Isaiah, and he shares this insight. I am creating something new. There it is. Do you see it? I have put roads in deserts, streams and thirsty lands. What Isaiah is sharing with us is that even in the barrenness of the desert landscape, the presence of spirit symbolically is there with the rushing water, streams, because the land is thirsty for the water. Like us, we're thirsty to remember and rediscover our white stone divinity, which really fills our soul up. So we're nourished with that life quenching uh, presence of spirit which is within us. Also, the white stone is uh, an archetype and is not really uh, related to dogma. It's really about a new beginning, a new experience, a new metaphysical experience. Today, this morning, the white stone, we can begin by experiencing and starting to build really new soul patterns, new soul empires within us. What kind of Christ empire is, is within your soul, within your soul's consciousness? Because as you go through this new year, 2024, you can incorporate this divine idea of the white stone. Again, what are you asking? What are you believing? And what are you willing to receive as you go forward? One of the hindrances I find when we uh, step into new opportunities or into new years like we are 2024 is there's a tendency to think that maybe we mm, 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 maybe don't deserve it. I'm here this morning to say that you deserve it. 
You deserve a white stone consciousness and you deserve it not only one time in your life, but as many times as you're willing to stand in a higher understanding of your divine Christ nature. I'd encourage you not to be discouraged by any apparent slow progress. Again, we don't want to repeat old failures. We need to get ready. We need to anticipate great progress before us. We need to lean into a new, higher understanding spirit. See, are we willing to lean into a higher understanding metaphysical spirit? This is a new year, 2024. Let's allow it to be different for us. This is from that great sage Buddha, and he says, no matter how hard the past is, you can always begin again. That's the definition really of what the white stone can mean for us. You're willing to step into a new understanding, a new victorious Christ self-consciousness within you. Remember, in unity, it's about self-change. We teach self-transformation. We're not here to change the world. We will affect the world by our frequency, but we always turn within. Because unless we truly change our own consciousness, which means we re configure patterns within our subconscious mind. Whatever the change may be, it's not going to be lasting or perfect. We want it to be lasting and perfect. Encourage you this morning to think of today as a blank page where you can write a new tale of who you are. I can hardly wait. Are you excited about beginning again? It's a new day. We have new opportunities. We have new chances. We should be optimistic about this great truth because we can eliminate any agony or frustration or anxiety in our lives. Let's leave that in the old 2023. Let's boldly step into 2024. Let's ask and believe and receive the blessings that we truly deserve. Again, the white stone ceremony, I'd like to go into that. The white stone ceremony is you take a moment to reflect and to hear and then record your new spiritual truth name on your new white stone. So what I'd like to do is we use a white stone. This is from Israel. You can use a piece of paper. You can use it as a bookmark. You can use it, anything you want to write on. Symbolically, we're using this white stone, but you can use anything. And what I invite you to do is take whatever the stone is and hold it in the palm of your hand. Put the intention of the indwelling Christ spirit within you. What is your new name? It could be anything. It not only could be a name, but it could be a picture. It could be an attribute of your being that you really want to see unfolded and developed. It could be light. It could be faith. It could be one of our 12 powers. It could be anything you want it to be. It could be a smiley face. You get to name it. So as we go through this, I'd like to allow you, and you can hit pause if you want to, uh, if you want to take some time in contemplation. I don't want to rush you. But whatever it is, hold that stone and ask that stone. Ask that stone, what is my new name for 2024? Again, when the other soul takes a long time, he's slow. And you, and you can still think about this as I continue on with my talk. What I'm sharing here with is sometimes how the ego gets into our, our way, causes more friction. You've heard the phrase, in another soul does something, oh, they're just slow. They just take forever to get a job done. Another phrase that the ego likes to use is, when the other soul doesn't do it, he's simply lazy. They knew what had to be done. Why didn't they do that? Of course, I'm talking for myself. I'm talking about the ego mind. These are some of the things that are roadblocks that plug up our new name, that plug up the channel of light within us, that put a screen over the Christ light within us. Another phrase I've heard is, when the other soul does and acts without being told, he overstepped his bounds. She didn't know what she was doing. She should have known better. She should have asked her. He should have asked for permission. Again, I'm not accusing you of this. These are just phrases that I've heard. Again, when other souls get ahead of us, move past us, oh, they just got all the breaks. You know that. I never had anything. I had to make it all myself. Drama, drama, drama. And again, that is how the ego plugs us up. And those negative energies go back into our subconscious mind and they build up like a snowball. They get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they start outpicturing in our lives, whether it's a kink or whether it's experiences we don't want. 
let's let that go. As you hold on to that white stone, speak to that stone, that divine idea within you, because your soul has a word for you or a phrase or a picture. Claim it right here and right now during the service. This is, from, uh, this is some wisdom from a philosopher named Kent, and he shares this insight. Never underestimate the power you have to take your life in a new direction. Are you willing to step into a new understanding of who you are? Are you willing to step into really what wholeness is? What does wholeness mean to you? Jesus said, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. The word perfect literally in Aramaic means to be complete. It's another word for wholeness. You see, the potential is always within us, but it's up to us to ask for it, to believe in it, and then receive it as good stewards of absolute truth. Many times at this uh, time of the year, you say, well, what's my New Year's resolution? Is it to buy new shoes or drink more green tea or don't worry about going to the gym or worry about going to the gym? Um, or I don't know if I can do this. Here's the deal. You could decide how you want to show up in January 2024. Every day you have 24 hours in which to work on your new name, work with that new name, that new consciousness within you. I encourage you to really step up, step into that divine idea and allow it to be yours. Again, the object of a new year is a new soul beginning. See, some people want to drag the past into their present. And you can do that. And I will admit, I did that for a very long time. And in truth, we call that a martyr or victim consciousness. If you're going to call forth a metaphysical, metaphysician consciousness, and that's really where you want to really call forth your divine name, the white stone, you want to ask, you want to believe, and you want to receive, then you need to not be in a victim ego Ademic consciousness, believing that outside, outside effects are causative, and because this is happening outside, I got to be all sour. You can be. You don't have to be. We're called to be a metaphysician, and that's the consciousness we want when we hold that stone to get our new name, our new name this morning. This is from what is considered by many philosophers as one of the most learned uh, individuals who's ever lived that we have recorded some of his wisdom. And this is from the great Greek philosopher Socrates. And he says, the secret to change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Just breathe that in. That's white light. Socrates was a, was a true student. Socrates was a game changer especially in Western civilization, because Socrates really affected Plato, which of course affect, affected uh, also uh, Aristotle, and most of our Western theology is based on those three minds there. And of course, if you go back into antiquity, all the information that Socrates really received was from Pythagoras, who was an Egyptian priest. So it really goes back to the Egyptians. But again, are you willing to let go? You don't fight the past. So here's the deal, whatever you fight, it's gonna keep showing up because you're giving it energy. What you do is you take your focus away from it. You focus on the white stone. You focus on the blessings that you want in your life. Again, when we cut something out this new year, let's try to replace it with something that brings balance and function. One of the things Emmett Fox always used to teach is when you create a space, you release in something, an experience or an idea or a sickness or a prosperity challenge you don't want, you let that go, and, but you, what you do is you wanna put in its place something that will build you up. You don't leave that space empty because that old programming will eventually come back and we don't want that. We want a new white stone Sunday experience. Again, not just for this Sunday. How about for every day of this 2024? That's a bold idea. A new truth year. It's a new truth beginning. All things can change if we allow them to. Again, it, again, the power rests within us. Either we're gonna turn on the switch or we're gonna leave it off. I'd like to share a story with you about a student who went to a very wise man. Once a student came to a very wise sage and asked this question. What do, what do people lack to make uh, the world a better place? And the sage responded, they lack things they don't ask about or for, the sage answered. Seeing the student very perplexed, the sage explained, what do people ask God for? 
They ask for happiness. They ask for wealth, love, even a talent for the sake of securing a huge, huge bounty of abundance of money or something like that. Again, for the sake of securing this wealth or they want fame. Did you ever hear someone ask to be made spiritually smarter, more gentler, more kinder? The student thought and shook his head. No, I've never heard that before. That's it. That's it. The sage said uh, regretfully, everyone considers themselves already ego self-sufficient. Ooh, let's take a breath right here. That's really, that's what we're talking about. Ego self-sufficient. The ego is really self-intelligent based on duality, believing on selfishness, and mostly uh, not overly kind, and they're, they're willing themselves entirely into a direction that maybe isn't the best direction for them. As a result, this world does not become any better, doesn't become any smarter, and doesn't become any kinder. Uh, leaving, the student repeated boastfully to himself, ah, a good mind, that's what people uh, do not think to ask about, for then the world will become a better place. But this high truth wisdom ideal went nowhere with this student, for the student felt so proud about this sage's wisdom that he shared with him that he never really thought or it never occurred to him or to the student that he needed to embody the wisdom, but only to tell other folks the way it should be. And I think many times uh, we hear that. Let's start living for ourselves. Let's start living for our own understanding, our own divinity, our own self-direction. See, again, a white stone consciousness is somebody who's actualized. In metaphysics, we'd call that a Christian, somebody who's awakened to the Messiah within them, not awakened to an ego consciousness. And sometimes people say, well, wherever, Michael, where is this ego consciousness? Where can I see it? Where can I read about it? Uh, turn on the nightly news. Turn on to the political commentary channels. Read the newspaper. You can even see it in the sports section or the comics. These people pontificate, they know everything. You know, maybe they do. The question though for a white stone beginning is, is the information and truth really based on the one presence and the one power? That's what makes the difference. And does it promote the divinity within all humanity? This is from Unity Minister Eric Butterworth. We can handle the challenges of our life if we believe we have the capacity to meet them. See, we come in fully loaded. We have all the programs we can tap into because we're spiritual beings. The challenge is we don't sometimes want to work with the answers that we receive. Again, what are you asking for? What do you really believe in? And what are you willing to receive? Those are really the three components of the white stone consciousness. See, you can ask for a lot of stuff, but if you don't believe you deserve it, it's probably not gonna show up in your life. And if you don't receive it, it's for sure never gonna show up in your experiences. A white stone consciousness is causing us, it's calling us to be victorious within our own life. Again, New Year's resolutions. What's working for us? A lot of times we use New Year resolutions, whether you have one or you don't have one. You hear about them. You know what I'm talking about. But I feel many times they're time wasters. You waste a lot of time. Well, I was going to do this. I was going to lose weight. I was going to wax the car again. Gonna, woulda, shoulda, gonna, woulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda, coulda. Let's let that go. Let's live in a white stone consciousness. Let's ask for what we want. Let us believe that we deserve what we want and let us receive it boldly in a white stone consciousness. And this is from that sage, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Write on your heart that every day is the best day in the year. What I love about Ralph Waldo Emerson is he's right to the point. You notice he's saying, is this going to be the best day? Only we can decide that. The sports commentator, the political commentators, wherever they may be, wherever you're looking for your wisdom, the great halls of justice or the great, great sages or wherever those, the Vatican or the up in Tibet or wherever you're thinking wisdom resides, even Jerusalem, we're the Jerusalem. The white stone is within us and wherever we are, God is. And that means we have access to the truth. We have the ability to ask and believe and to receive the blessings that we want. Again, let us let go. Let us really embrace the possibility of being different. 
in 2024. Again, I am prompted and I am inspired. I inspire myself and others to rise to a consciousness where spirit within me leads me and guides me and nourishes me with perfection. You deserve perfection. Perfection is another word for wholeness. But the question is, are you willing to ask for it? Are you willing to believe it? Are you willing to receive it? This is from the original editor of Daily Word, Frank B. Whitney. Know that Christ in you will prevail. Realize this presence inspires and encourages us. See, are you really encouraged? You see, if you're having a prayer practice that you're sitting and just looking and thinking and feeling and imaging about your problems and how things are sour and things are going to be sour, they're always going to be sour because of some challenge, whatever it may be. As they say in metaphysics, snap out of it. Maybe this white stone can be the morning you can snap out of that. Be of good courage. Again, courage is something we receive. It's not from some outside deity. Courage is something that wells up within us when we've accepted the divinity, when we've accepted the wholeness, we, when we have accepted the white stone consciousness, the divine ideal within us. Again, let's take a new attitude that we cannot be defeated and we will not be discouraged no matter what. That's a white stone consciousness. Again, I know that the eternal heavens of mind, there are no sins or shortcomings to be recorded. See, this is the deal. We spend so much time dwelling on our ignorance, dwelling on things that didn't work out, dwelling on the fractions, dwelling on this or that or this or how that failure went. Oh, that was catastrophic, that event. Let's let that go. I'm not saying it was an event maybe you want to live through again, but let's not dwell on it. Let's turn it into a stone. Let's turn it into the belief that we can ask and believe and receive a different experience if we practice the Christ consciousness within us. And this is from Unity Minister Winifred uh, Wilkinson Hausman. She says, sometimes all it takes to move a mountain is to move ourselves in the right direction. This morning, as we go through this white stone process, whether you receive the name or not, maybe you receive it later on this afternoon or it'll pop into your mind when you're doing the dishes, let's move in the right direction. And I, I'm here to say metaphysically, the right direction is always associated with the divinity, the indwelling Christ within each and every one of us. Again, we are free of yesterday's problems or snags if we choose to be. And in closing, I'd like to leave you with a few uh, deep words that we can take into the new year, 2024. Let's make this a new year. Uh, let's start and have a new beginning. Let's be a new person. Let's create new motivations. Let's self-motivate ourselves to whatever that divine idea is, image or whatever you receive during this white stone ceremony. Let's know that we can claim it and we can clothe it. And by the power of the Christ within us, we self-transform ourselves. We become self-actualized. We truly become a repeatable Christ for our own life and our own soul and our own experience. And if you believe that high truth, I would just say thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And now time for our uh, offering. You can go to unityway.com and you can get our physical address or you can go to unityway.com and do an electronic donation. I invite you to, when you do do the gift, send it forth with a victorious, a Christ understanding of spirit that you deserve and we believe in circulation. We know that you will be blessed and it, these offerings really sustain us as a ministry. So again, if you join me with our prayer, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. And again, you can go to unityway.com and get that information. And whatever your gift is, know that it releases you from the past of 2023. And you can step into a bold, happy, courageous, victorious 2024. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now our prayer of, or excuse me, for protection. Let us know that we always have protection when we have remembered our wholeness, not only for our own self, but for all humanity and this world in which we live and move and have our being. If you'll join with me, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. 
The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Wherever we are, the white stone is within our consciousness, that truth, that image. May we ask, may we believe, and may we be open to receive the truth that we truly are whole, and we have the ability to live that truth, share that truth, again, as the Christ of our own life. Again, Happy New Year, and may this be a white stone consciousness uh, new year for each and every one of us, and we'll see you next week. And we just say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen.